Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to set up um, your Works Cited and also how to take a database citation and correct it um, to fit MLA. So this is the MLA citation guide from the LibGuys from Orange Coast College. Um, you can use this as a reference and we're actually going to flip back and forth between a couple things. I'm actually going to start with my Word document here and what I'm going to do is make sure first of all that I have my line spacing set to 2. So we can see we have that right here set to 2. And the very first thing that you always have in a work in a MLA works cited page is the word works cited at the top. Okay and then I need to center that. So I'm going to center that and then I'm going to click um, enter and then I'm going to go back to uncenter that. Okay, so here we have my beginning work cited. And let's say I want to use this article from EBSCO. Okay, this is from Academic Search Ultimate. Um, anything that says, ac that says EBSCO is going to give you the same interface and you'll have the same kind of citation set up. So one important thing to note here is that there is information about the particular um, uh, article here that you can use as backup, but there's also this cite button. So I'm going to click on the citation and then it pops up the citation. We want to pick the right format. Here's APA, um, but we actually want MLA. And I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And I'm going to open back up my Word document and I'm going to paste that, but I'm actually going to do a paste special. <clears throat> where it shows you it keeps the text only. You want to do this because um, otherwise there'll be formatting that will get in there that um, will give you the wrong font and all of that sort of thing. Um, and then I want to make a hanging indent. And if you put your mouse over here, you'll see it says hanging indent. And I'm going to push that over until it's about five spaces. It's just this little line um, between the, uh, the starting point and the one. Okay, and that gives me a hanging indent. Okay, so then the next thing that I want to do is make sure that this fits um, all of the things that are in my MLA citation. So if I go over here, this is a journal, so I'm going to click on journal articles and I'll see the things that need to be fixed. So I have to check, um, are the is the casing proper? Um, so in MLA, you need to capitalize all the important words in the title of the article and in the title of the journal. Okay, um, you need a volume and a number, you need uh, the date and the page range and the database and the DOI. Okay, so if I look at my work cited here, let me go ahead and make this a little bit smaller so you can see both. Um, we can see that it does have the author, um, the casing is proper, this needs to get um, italicized. We unitalicize it when we drop the formatting. Okay, so I italicize that back. It says volume 16, number 4. That's right. There's the date, and here's the page range. This is not right, though. EBSCOhost is not a database. Um, they're actually a publisher. So we need to look at the, the database we actually used. And in this case, if we go back um, to EBSCO, we can see that we are searching Academic Search Ultimate. Okay, if you have uh, the multiple database search, it will actually tell you the name of the database here at the bottom. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and change this EBSCO to Academic Search Ultimate and make sure you get the right name and that um, some of them are similarly named. So just make sure you have the right one. And then the DOI is right there. And that's it. We're done. Um, so that wasn't too hard, right? So if I have this another article from this one's from InfoTrack and Academic One file, so Gale and Academic One file, this one's a little trickier. Um, so what we're going to do on this one is scroll down and we'll see a source citation. And again, I'm going to copy and paste this into my paper. And keep in mind, you need to keep these in alphabetical order. So in this case, um, Griffiths becomes before Schumann, so I'm going to actually um, push that one down and pop this one in. And again, we're going to do a keep text only. And if you look at these two citations, you can see kind of the difference right away, right? There's a lot of excess information here at the end. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. 
Okay, I don't need that information. Um, it does look like I need a DOI. Um, so I need to see, is there a DOI on this page? So if I scroll back up, I'll see, yeah, there is a DOI. So then I need to copy this part, just the numbers, and then go back here and change, um, go ahead and type in here, DOI colon, and then again, I want to make sure I'm always having just the text. So there's the text of that number. And now I have the DOI number in there. Okay. Um, that is a requirement for journals um, in MLA and APA as well. So something to get used to. Um, one other thing that this database is going to do is it's going to give you um, a page. And they're only going to give you the first page and then indicate that there's more. But you actually need all the page numbers. So the first thing I need to do is add a P because I know there's multiple pages on this one. And then I'm actually going to click where it says DOI. And... Um, I can get some information here. Uh, the other thing I can do is it says download PDF. If you can download the PDF, you can actually pull up um, and find the page range. Um, so I downloaded the PDF and I can see at the top here, it has the actual page range, 296 to 301. Okay, so then I'm gonna go back and do 296 through 301. Okay, and now that matches, right, with the other one. Um, you may have to hunt for it. If there's no PDF available, you can Google the, the article. Um, you can look for other, look in other areas. If you can't find it, um, contact me and we'll see what we can find. Okay, so the volume and numbers are okay. This part needs to be italicized. Whoops. So that's italics. Okay, and then we want to look here. Let's see, this looks like it needs to be properly cased. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And and an is an and, don't get capitalized. Okay, and then um, on again is probably not significant enough of a word. So you can see I'm picking out like the were not the in-between words, but all of the words that are, that are, um, you know, more significant. So the two letter words, probably not um, as much, will get capitalized. So there's one last thing that we need to do. Um, we also need to italicize the names of the databases. So I'll just go ahead and do academic one file italics and academic search ultimate italics. Okay, so that um, should take care of everything. Um, everything's double spaced as it should be. And um, these two citations look like they're ready to go. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know and good luck on your assignments.